Well, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> what a good day on the farm. Hi, sweeties. You're a good girl. Good girl. Very early good morning Sunday morning to you guys. We had a surprise today. Oh my goodness, we went on a wonderful family trip yesterday, short trip. And we got home uh, around dark and we got everything up and everybody was taken care of and everything was good. And we locked everything up and this morning we got a surprise. Hey! Okay, Mama, is this gonna work today? All right, guys, we came out this morning. We usually set up the outdoor area of the coops. This is my buff side, my cream leg bars, my cuckoo moran side. And we found that our broody buff had hatched two fresh babies. She still was on two eggs and I have candled them. I have one remaining with a baby in it. Here's what I've chosen to do. I don't want, look here, I don't want her to remain in my nesting box because she was up high. And you can see that's not a good scenario for the babies. This is why I tell you, you need to have a plan B, potentially a plan C. And I'm trying to work with that right now, okay? Let me tell you right now, no two broodies are the same. I've said this over and over again. Um, it has a lot to do with breed but it has a lot to do with the individual hen. Do you want to come out? Do you want to come out? So I'm trying to decide what to do here, which I already knew this. I'm like, am I going to have to pull her, put her in a cage? Um, if we hatch the babies, will I? Sometimes I have pulled the babies, not only because or uh, because of a stressful situation. It's just because I felt like at the time, due to weather, due to constraints, that maybe you know, just taking the babies, letting them be raised in a separate brooder in the house, uh, me kind of taking over a little bit. Um, it, it really does. It's every situation is subjective, and it is an individual situation. Um, clearly, these babies are fresh. They, I don't want them out loose. Um, in the coop with the large hens, who you can see are very curious. <laughs> and we have a rooster in here. And so you can see it can be a, might be a confusing situation. So, but I want you to know that that could always present itself with your broody. Now, in my barn, I have a broody stall in apartment. I don't want to pull this girl and put her in the barn. That's going to totally flip her lid. Oh, look, 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 look. See? Did you see that? I'm glad we came out here and filmed this because look what just happened. I under, look, 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 look. Is she gonna make it? Oh, little wing stuff. But she, look at that. Monkey see, monkey do. Mama's doing a good job in trying to stay with them and teach them to scratch and peck. But now look what arena. So this is clearly, look here, these longer slats on the side because my wire is broke, came right out. So you just lived it with me. I'm telling you, drama in the chicken coop, drama in the chicken coop. So I fixed the cage just now. <laughs> I just fixed the cage and they can still fit through these little tiny um, squares. They're just cut, popping right through. This is why I'm telling you, you've really got to have those really small, uh, fine mesh uh, wire, the fine mesh wire. Um, it just works great to keep things in and out. It just reduces um, them escaping and it reduces pecking from other things. This is still, as small as this is, it's still too big. Um, if you were to set this out in the yard um, and have um, babies in it or chickens in it during the day, um, you could still have a predator issue because a paw can come through that. A raccoon can come in and just go pull it through, pull it towards them or through. Um, so you have to really watch that. Okay, guys, I think we have found a happy ending. So far, this mama has been doing really well in this 50 gallon tub. 
Some of them do, some of them don't. This is what I'm talking about. So far, she's okay. Now I have her in here with fresh pine shavings. I brought her water over and some fresh feed for the babies. It's very warm, but very there's plenty of air. We're on the porch, so this is completely guarded. Um, the thing is, is it's really great to keep them with the flock, but separate it as much as possible if you can. Um, because now I'm going to probably have to reacclimate Mama in about 30 days. I would rather do that than lose the baby chicks, however. So I really do prefer a broody to raise the babies if she can. That's the ultimate goal. But at the same time, you have to be completely open to the idea of sometimes it doesn't work out. Now, that's where we step in. So, so far, so good. I'm going to cover this. And what I will choose to do is every day for, you know, 30 minutes or an hour, they will have field trips. That will give her time out here in the yard uh, with the babies to be watched. And she can teach them to do what they need to do continually. And she can have some downtime for herself. Okay? So, so far so good fingers crossed <laughs> all right guys just showing you what we're doing here you got to constantly be in it to win it and you have to constantly be working with your homestead it's just part of it god bless y'all take care you're a good mama look at those doopies you did so good yeah fresh sunshine today awesome mama awesome